Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio Workshop. As always, I'm here with Zuri. Greetings. And today we have something pretty cool and, and something we haven't really done uh, before. This is a design submitted by the Ender Blast. He's submitted, I think, one or two things before, but this is a very cool... Uh, I, I don't. E what, what would you even call this? Like a base control center? <laughs> a logistics demand base system. There you go. Sounds so much better when you say it. Uh, thanks. So, uh, so yeah, logistics demand base system. So, um, what we have here, and what the first thing I love about this is that it's actually straightforward enough to where I can actually understand it. Uh, what we have is these constant combinators. And you set in these the amount you essentially want uh, to be made and held in the logistics network for every item. So it's just simple. You just go in, you set the item and however much you want in your network, um, you know, and for the base to make up to. And you just do that on all of these. That's why there's so many because it's for like every item in the game that you would want. And then you just connect them to an arithmetic combinator which essentially just turns it into a negative. It's just taking the input, multiplying by negative one to make it a negative, and then sending all of it to the substation, which is then put into another combinator, a decider, um, to kind of flip it around into a demand so that when you look over this power pole, um, everything in red is what's needed. And obviously it's everything because we, we haven't made anything that it's wanting yet. But... Um, but I'll let Zuri kind of go over this because there's a few things you can do to actually make this a little simpler in terms of the combinators and stuff. Sure. Well, you can. You only need one math combinator for all of these constant combinators. You can just put them in a small 4x4 four four grid, with the same number of combinators, and have one math combinator multiply it by negative 1. Yeah, so, so just feed all your, hook all your constant combinators together and then just feed all of those um, that are hooked together into the one uh, arithmetic combinator and multiply it by negative one. Yeah, he went over the post how he does the same thing I do actually. I like to use green water for long dis green wire for long distance and red wire for local computation. So you'll see green wire stretching all over the place and if you build something like a smelter design it'll have red wires going to the local computations it needs yeah that's a really good point it's a good way to you know kind of separate things and keep track of your wires and such um so so that's like the control center right which is really cool i mean i would say this is the kind of the meat of the design because if you take this you can then just make your own designs you know and stuff as, as long as you're you know hooking it up with the wire um but he has also provided an entire blueprint book, and uh, I will have to get his permission first, but I, if he allows, we will share the entire book. Um, if not, then just this. And he has these like pre-built designs, which is cool. So this uh, generic shell is what this is, right? This is, um, it's a beacon shell with pipe, substations, roboports included. And then you just take all these other designs. I mean, it's pretty much everything, circuit, modules, solar panels, uh, you know, red, red rocket parts, oil stuff, and you just fit them in here, and they all fit in this, and you just stamp down what you want inside of these shells. And they're all already pre-connected with wire as well, so like this circuit one, um, I could throw this in here, and all the green wires are already connected to the inserters, and uh, and it just fits perfectly. And you just have that for all your stuff. But uh, some of these are a little bit silly in terms of uh, what's required. And I'll let Zuri go over that and uh, kind of just discuss that. Well, especially the fluids. For instance, this, this thing right here. Well, we put productivity modules in here to slow it down, actually. And get more product out. And it'll eat about 120 gas per second and 120 water per second. Eat the thing if it ever takes on fully. There's no way these pipes are going to be able to handle that. It's just not possible. Yeah, because pipes have the, a limited throughput, especially over a distance. Uh, as a general, there might not be enough mobile ports 
the support the bots needed for most of these builds. So you may have to put rows of ports on top and bottom after stacking a couple. And most of these builds you can get away with shrinking down a vertical tile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point too. You can shrink them down and uh, yeah, and, and some of these, you know, it's a little bit silly, like we said, 120, even regardless of the pipes, just producing 120 uh, petroleum a second is not really an easy task. Yeah, producing that much isn't easy, and moving it down a pipe isn't easy. I believe the author said you could use barrels if you wanted to, and that's actually what I suggest you do for most of these. Yeah, I mean, for like something like this, let's just say hypothetically you could produce petroleum, um, I think maybe if you put an unbarreler, like if you were using barrels, you put an unbarreler on each side, you might be able to, to get, it, get it forced through here well enough. Or two or three barrelers on each side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Several. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, if we do share the book, if, he, if, if that's okay with him, you know, you can use these designs, you can change them. Uh, personally, I think kind of what we would suggest is maybe coming up with different like modular designs for different products so you know have like your oil ones use a different beacon setup maybe or just a different setup altogether um you know so that it's not as ridiculous and, and stuff like that yeah, i highly recommend designing your own and some of these are silly like uh there's 12 activity 3 modules builds in one of these stamps and there's no way you could ever feed that like, I don't think Will would even try to do something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Even even on our uh, SpaceX Plus map, I think when we needed, like, 10,000 modules, I, I think we only had maybe, like, eight uh, level three of each type working at once or something, and it was still hard to feed it. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so you can come up with your own designs. Again, like, the, the meat of this, the real thing, is this control center... Which, I mean, you could build your own, but it's, I mean, it's really straightforward. And it's just super cool because you can control, you know, everything in your base, how much you want just from here without having to go and change, like, every single inserter on each build to the output that you want. Yeah, this is a very nice way of controlling output of an entire factory. I just got to warn you that you gotta be careful when you're placing the blueprints. If you skip a wire somewhere and the inserter works without limit, you're going to screw up your entire base. <laughs> yeah, that's a really, really good thing to watch out for. And it will happen, or has a high likelihood to sometimes, because blueprints can work and stuff. But uh, but really, I think that covers it. You know, if you come up with your own designs, uh, if, if you use the control center, you know, just run your green wire, uh, wire from the power poles, and then for your own designs, you just have to hook it um, from, you know, your power into your inserters. And your inserters are set to just the item... Uh, less than zero because with our demand system here with this power pole uh, all these things are in the negatives right so if they're in the negatives obviously less than zero and it's going to let the inserter work until it gets positive which means it's reached whatever you set and then the inserter stops because it's no longer under zero and uh, I mean it's pretty it's just really straightforward it's really cool but uh, do you have any other comments or thoughts for this Uri, before we call it nope all right, awesome, great build. Uh, the control center, I think, will at least be in the description, maybe the blueprint book, depending on what he says. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Love to hear your thoughts and uh, more submissions as well. But until next time, we will catch you later. Later.